Hello, this is Heather Meeker. This is a narrated presentation on how to create an open source license notice in excruciating detail. I'm a lawyer and private practice and a venture capitalist focusing on open source software licensing. This presentation is intended to help you navigate through the process of creating a license notice. The first thing I want to say in this presentation is that you should do whatever you can not to get to this process at all. I'm going to explain that in a moment. This presentation is not about why you should use open source notices. There's another presentation in my list about that. So take a look at that if you're interested in figuring out when and how you have to deliver open source notices. This presentation assumes that you have already determined that you need a manually created notice file for a binary distribution. This process should not be necessary if you are using automation to create your notice file or if you are delivering your notices within a source code delivery. That's a lot easier, so that's one reason why I say you should never get to this presentation in the first place. If you think you need to create a manually created notice for a binary distribution, then you are probably distributing a consumer electronics product. If not, you should double check to see whether you actually need to engage in this process. But let's now make the assumption that you have decided that you need to do it, and let's go forward and see how to actually do it. Here are some guidelines to remember. First of all, duplicating license notices isn't a risk. It's just untidy looking. So there is no reason in particular to deduplicate notices, except that the notice just doesn't look very tidy when you have lots of different copies of the same license. This process shows you how to do it without duplication in case you want to do that. Also, you should remember that proprietary licenses also often require their own notices. So if you're going to be delivering a notice file with your product, you might want to consider combining the notices required for open source software and proprietary software. Whether you want to do that is up to you. Next, plain text or a .text file with no formatting is sufficient for most open source notices. You can make your notice file prettier and put nice formatting in it if you want to, but it's not legally necessary to do that. And it's a lot easier to use plain text. So most people going through this process create their notice file in just a plain text file. Also, and this is a very important point, you'll hear me refer to this a few times during this presentation, you should not try to fix the notices of projects that you're using. If they haven't done their notices correctly, all you should do is reproduce them and not try to fix them. You often don't have the information to really fix them properly. You should exercise common sense, but you shouldn't try to fill in information that isn't there. You shouldn't try to reformat uh, notices that don't need reformatting. And so overall, you use a WYSIWYG approach. What you see is what you get and you just pass it on. As a corollary to this, don't fix what you didn't break in the first place. So a lot of open source projects, particularly small ones, don't do their notices properly. They might lack copyright notices, license notices, etc. And you just have to use what you're given from the upstream project. You can't try to fix them. A common mistake is for a project to use a template license when it should actually be filling in the information in the template. We'll look at that in detail in a slide or two. But also, projects sometimes just say something like GPL for their licensing information, and they don't tell you what version. Do the best you can with that using your common sense. If the project doesn't actually have a license notice file, meaning a copy of the license, then I recommend that you use the generic form in the SPDX listing. You can easily find that on the web. SPDX has the canonical forms of all the most common licenses, and you can just copy that if you don't have a license notice file to copy. The most important thing to learn about doing license notice files is there are two kinds of open source licenses. 
you probably thought I was going to say permissive and copyleft, but that's not what I'm talking about here. There are kinds of licenses that have one canonical form, and an example of that is GPL. GPL version 3, shown on this screen, it only has one form and it never changes. You'll see on the screen that there's a copyright notice associated with that. It's, it's right under the name of the license, but that copyright notice actually refers to the license text itself. It doesn't refer to the software that's being licensed under this license. The other kind of license is a template license, and an example of that is BSD or MIT. And you'll see that those licenses have the copyright notice for the software baked into the top of the license. The example on the screen here is MIT, and the copyright notice has been filled in as if this was software whose copyright was owned by me. Now, as I mentioned, projects often make mistakes. And when they make mistakes, you should not try to fix them. So for example, this is a very common mistake. Here we have the MIT license on the left-hand side and the copyright information for the software is filled in. But on the right-hand side, we have a copy of the template. And that template is what people use in order to fill in the copyright information for the software. But sometimes a project will just use this template form without filling in that information. When that happens, don't try to fix it. You just use what you're given by the project. Now we're going to talk about the steps that you go through to create a license notice. First and most important, you have to start with a correct bill of materials, meaning all of the names of all the software packages you're using in the product and their licenses, including the license version. Without this information, you won't be able to create your notice file. Next, I suggest you sort the list by the name of the component. This isn't necessary to do, but when you go back to do checking of your notice file or you go back to update it later on, you'll be happier if you sorted it. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to find individual components. Next, I suggest that you add a version number to your notice file. It might correspond with a particular release or version of your product. But what that means is that when you go back to check the notice file later on or update it, you won't have version problems and get confused about which form of your license notice you're working on. The next step gets bifurcated for licenses with official forms like GPL and licenses with variant forms like MIT. For the ones that have official forms, you should list all the components covered by the license and then reproduce the entire license text only once. Here, we're avoiding doing duplicates of the license notice, as I mentioned before. For the licenses that have variant forms, you have to reproduce each entire license individually because they're not exactly the same. They will have a different copyright notice for the software at the top. So you're going to have a lot more copies of, say, the MIT license and one copy of, for instance, the GPL. Now, every open source license could theoretically have its own idiosyncratic notice provisions. The rules that we're using here are the rules that apply to most of the licenses. You need to have one process or it's going to get very expensive and difficult to do your license notices. There is one very common license that has a variation you should be aware of, and that is Apache 2. Apache 2 requires you to reproduce the license, just like every other open source license does, but it also has a provision that allows the licensor to include an additional notice file called notice.txt. So for Apache 2, you need to also copy over any notice.txt files in their entirety. Now, actually, it is very rare for any author to require such an additional notice. You won't find many notice.txt files used with Apache 2 software, but you do have to look for them and make sure you copy them if they're there. Finally, a lot of projects will have embedded notices. What that means is that there may be one, two, three, or many licenses reproduced in a single notice file because the project 
contains software from other sources. When you see that, you should just reproduce everything that the project gives you. You don't need to separate them and you don't need to change them. Now, some licenses actually have different versions. For instance, GPL2 or GPL3 or GPL2 or later. GPL2 Plus means GPL2 or any later version. The licensee gets the choice of which version it wants to operate under. For uh, Plus licenses like this, you only need to reproduce the earliest version unless you have specifically chosen a later version for some reason of your own. Some licenses, most notably GPL, also have some exceptions that can apply to them. For those, you should reproduce both the license and the exception, but if you've already reproduced the baseline license, all you need to do is reproduce the exception. Now I'm going to walk you through an actual example of a notice file that I'm constructing based on the bill of materials that you see on this slide. You can see here that I have one under MIT, one under the template MIT, one under Apache 2, one under Apache 2 with a notice.txt file, one under LGPL 2.1, one under GPL 2 or any later version, one under GPL 3, and one under GPL 3 with an exception. You might have noticed that I haven't alphabetized these components. That's because I have a very short list of components. If the list of components were more than, say, 10, I would be sure to try to alphabetize them because it would help me a lot when I go back to check this notice file later on. And just as a reminder, here are the do's and don'ts. Do find the license.txt file, or sometimes it's called copying.txt, in the original project. Do use a generic version of the license if the project indicates the license but does not provide a license.txt or copying.txt. Do use the exact license file from the project and don't try to fill in any missing information that you don't have. First, we're going to reproduce the variant forms, the MIT license. So you'll see we have one example here that uses the template and one that uses an actual copyright notice. The second one is the correct way to use MIT, but not all projects properly do this. On this slide, I don't have enough space to put both of the licenses, but you'll see those ellipses at the end. That's supposed to mean that the entire license is there. So we've listed each of these MIT licenses, one in template form and one in filled out form, We've put both of them in the notice file. Next, we have an example of Apache 2.0. As you can see here, you put the name of the component and then you just reproduce the Apache license in its entirety. This is another canonical license, so it doesn't vary from project to project. The next example is an Apache 2.0 project that has a notice.txt file. Here, I have simply put the name of the component and the notice.txt file. That's because the Apache license was already in the prior component. Now we have another example of a canonical license, LGPL 2.1, but you'll see that this project uses LGPL 2.1 plus or LGPL 2.1 or any later version. At this time, there is only one later version and that's LGPL 3, but that doesn't matter to us right now. So what we do here is very similar to what we did with Apache 2.0. We put the name of the component, we put the entire license, but here we only put version 2.1. It's not necessary to put every later version in to the notice file, only the one that's mentioned. Next, we have a component under GPL2+. Similar to what we did before, we have the name of the component, we say GPL2 or later, and we reproduce only GPL version 2. Finally, we have a component under GPL3. And by the way, if this said GPL3+, plus, it wouldn't make any difference because this is the latest version of GPL that exists right now. But in any case, 
we do something very similar to what we've done before. We put the name of the component and then we reproduce the entire license. Finally, we have a component that is under GPL3 with an exception. Because we have already put a copy of GPL3 in our notice file, we simply put the name of the component and then reproduce the exception. Now it wouldn't be wrong, of course, to reproduce GPL3 again if you wanted to, but this process we're going through attempts to minimize duplication. Okay, your notice file is done. That might have been a little bit time consuming, but it's not difficult to do. The license notice file that you've created in this process is actually pretty long, so I can't fit it on a slide, but I think you get the idea. I hope this presentation has been helpful to you. As always, if you want a copy of my book, you can download one for free at my website. Just go there and follow the instructions. This is Heather Meeker, signing off.